stores as the cavern on the 16th of January 1957. Within a very short space of time, it became the premier jazz club outside of London, but a big names on the jazz circuit turns about the cavern in Liverpool. But the jazz era at the cavern was very short lived. By mid 1957, a book on regular skiffle nights managed to perform at the cavern a staggering 292 times. I do play a guitar, and sometimes I play the fool. <laughs> 84 Rosebury Street invited the band to wait inside our house. After two hours, the crowd was still waiting outside to fight with the band, so she called the police. And although it was their first public appearance, the quarrymen actually got police escorts back to the bus stop to get their bus back to Penny Lane. <laughs> then with his parents, not very far away, just down the street, number 59. Off chance anyone watch Peaky Blinders? Well, for those of you who do, there's Garrison Street to your left. From Biggie Blinders. Even when I'm 64, which wasn't used till three years after Bud had left this house, written here. Great place for music. Over a hundred songs written in the house, 20 of which being hits for the band. The majority of them were written in the bathroom because the acoustics are better, apparently. People lived in the house right up until 1964. She was already world famous, 22 years old, still living in that little house with his dad. Now, if you want to do that tour, you get the tickets from the National Trust website. We're now taking the same routes Paul and George would have taken each and every day, when living out in Speak, or four miles behind us. This is the route they would have taken down to Penny Lane. John would have been travelling the main road that runs parallel with us. Again, meeting up at Penny Lane, travelling from there into the city. So you imagine how many times lads have actually this route. We're now